I'm Lisa Saunders. Welcome to my show. Um, now with fall coming, there are leaves. I saw leaves all over my yard and my husband was telling me I had to get out there and start raking. And I was picturing my aching back. So luckily, I have with me two physical therapists here who are going to tell me how not to have that aching back and end up in their practice. And also the same thing with snow, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead and introduce yourselves, where you're from and what you do. So my name's Dr. Sarah Denoya Aruda. I'm a physical therapist over at um, Shoreline Physical Therapy in East Lyme, Connecticut. And here I have Katie. Yes, I'm Katie DiCarlo, and I'm a physical therapy intern also at Shoreline Physical Therapy. And I've been to that practice, and it's wonderful. It's Thank so you. busy, and <laughs> a lot of people having getting uh, treated. Now, are they all there because they were raking or Absolutely. Shoveling? No. <laughs> no. We, have, we want to prevent that, actually. Okay. <laughs> all right. Because it is true that whenever I do yard work, I really am in pain. Mm -hmm. um, now, so what, can you just tell me what sorts of injuries do you see at the clinic when it's time to start raking, which is now. The right. leaves are down. Absolutely, yes. There's, um, when the season change to fall or winter, a lot of common injuries we see are low back injuries, like you said before, and shoulder injuries. There was actually a study in 2009 that said that 16,000 people visited the emergency room because of seasonal related injuries. And what the a lot emergency of, room? Yes. Now, and, actually, my husband has done that because mm -hmm. of a back. So this is, are you talking spasms, back spasms? It can be any sort of low back pain or shoulder pain, but also a lot of injuries are heart, heart attacks and stroke. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not just... Because of the increase in physical activity, a lot more people are having... Um, blood and heart issues. Wow, okay. It's mm -hmm. way more intense than you thought. So why do these injuries occur? So with the low back and shoulder injuries, it's all about poor posture and improper technique on how to rake and shovel. People don't use the proper precautions for ice when they're walking outside and the leaves, leaves can get really wet and heavy, heavy. and so lifting mm -hmm. is an issue and especially if they're left outside for too long, they can develop a frost, making it a fall risk. And so those are, and the heart and stroke is all due to a lot of people who are already inactive. Now they're getting physically active and it's adding increased stress to the heart. So is it better to rake as you go, or should I wait for all the leaves to be down? So sort of torn whether I should start right now. Yes, taking, going at it as soon as it starts and doing it in little bouts. You don't want to attack your entire yard that's covered in two feet of leaves Which all Which is at what once. I usually yes. do. Yes, don't wait. Because I hope it'll be less work if I do it don't at once. Don't wait. Do a couple at a time, do a few minutes at a time, take breaks, and keep going. All right. All right. Um, what, so what can people do to prevent these injuries overall? Aside from sure. you are going to show us later how to actually yep. use the rake and the shovel. Absolutely. But is there something I can be doing throughout the year to prevent these injuries? Um, well, you can actually utilize your resources, first of all. You want to hire some outside help. If there's, you know, the neighborhood boy down the street who can rake the leaves for you, ask him to do it instead. Or there's snow removal companies that will help out with that too. Um, there's, for walking on ice, we have these shoe grips that you can purchase online or um, in the store. And they, um, it's, it'll prevent you from falling. Wow, those are mm -hmm. wicked looking things. Show, the, show it to the camera. Pretty wow. <laughs> Now, I actually did buy something like that, but I didn't, I was too lazy to put it on my shoe. I really should, right? Yes, absolutely. If I'm shoveling, because actually I do yep. know a lot of people who've fallen and cracked their head and suddenly their life has changed. Right. Yep. All right. Always so take I need the precautions to, first. All right. So I need to buy that. All mm -hmm. right. Is there anything else I can do to stay physically fit? <laughs> well, yeah, you can, regular exercise is always best. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also, before you do any sort of physical activity, like raking leaves or shoveling snow, you can do a 10 minute warm up and get the body uh, working a little bit, used to the activity. Oh, okay. That'll help. That's a good and idea. Again, like I said, take breaks. Okay, so lots of breaks. Should I be drinking hot chocolate? Do you have anything like that that I should be doing? Or just well, you can do that during the break, right? Okay. No, stay hydrated. <laughs> Definitely stay hydrated. All right, well, you know what? If you wouldn't mind just showing us how to do it so sure. that, uh, you know, what are you gonna show us first? So the first thing, let's go with the leaves. 
let's show you how to rake. So we would like to demonstrate proper body mechanics before we show you what we typically see and why people end up in our clinic. Okay. So what Katie is going to do here is she's going to bend with her legs. She goes in the direction of where she needs to rake. Mm -hmm. And then she keeps her back nice and flat the whole time, so we're not going to see her for her back. And ideally, a good squat, we won't see her for her knees or her shoulders or anything, and she just collects it right towards her. What a lot of times will lead you into our clinic would be if she reaches way outside of her base of support, she's stressing her back, she might round her back, um, things like that. If she doesn't use her legs, this is how you're going to see back or shoulder injuries. Okay. What kind of shoulder? I don't really, maybe torn. A, to, typically a strain, um, like a muscle strain. But if you already have maybe poor posture and you've been shearing away at your rotator cuff tendons, that might be, you know, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Okay. Now, as a writer, I really should be sitting better yeah. than I do. Do you mind if you just show me quickly? And you even show me how I should be sitting for the TV show, and I will <laughs> never do that because it just doesn't look ladylike at all. But for the, since we're here to really help people, show me how I should be sitting for the TV okay, show. Okay, so, I mean, if you have a good support of your chair, then you do want to use it. Um, you will always want your feet in contact with the floor, and ideally a chair that allows your hips to come slightly higher than your knees. Um, a lot of people will do the crossing, which isn't great because it shortens certain muscles and lengthens uh, other muscles. Okay. So ideally, you want a good base of support, both feet on there. All right. Okay, if you want to work on your core a little bit, But that just bit, doesn't look that forward. attractive, <laughs> No, though. it looks kind of yucky, so All right. I All right. for TV, I might. All right, know, for TV, I'm going to stay like this, <laughs> even though it's improper, <laughs> and I might get injured when I rake. All right, do you have any, uh, what else do you have to show us? Okay, so before you even try to go out and try shoveling, you would want to make sure that um, you prep. So if you have those icy leaves or frost on the ground, um, you want to get some ice melt or some type of salt or even a kitty litter. And you, it's ideal if it's in some type of a bucket. If you have it in that giant bag, sometimes it's hard to maneuver and drag the bag where right. a bucket's a little easier. And then you're going to go at it small bits at a time. So if you're doing your stairs, you're going to use a small container that you're going to fill with the ice melt. Okay. And then, again, you need good mechanics. So some people will just chuck it out there and use, you know, <laughs> they're going to just, they're not thinking about their back. They're not doing any type of squat. Same thing how she was showing the raking. You want good body mechanics. And this is something people don't think about. Yeah, so, I'll say so I even have to think about that. And I should be wearing my shoe, those special mm -hmm. ice grabby, yeah, grippy ideally, things. Ideally. Okay, when so I go out wanna, there with my bucket. You want to prep, you know, your stairs and your driveway before you even get to where you're going to start to shovel. Okay. Okay, and, and preferably if you know that it's coming, you're going to put that down beforehand, before you even get snow. Oh, you do that? Yeah. I, I didn't know you, could, you provide that kind of information. <laughs> well, then, otherwise, you'll have a layer of ice underneath it. So even oh, though you I get didn't rid know of that that snow, helped. Okay. Yeah. So, so I could do that on my sidewalk before? Absolutely. So before it even snows, you should be prepping. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So then it would be safer for you to get out and actually do the removal of the snow. No. And then after okay. you remove it, then you can re. You know. Now, you were saying something so. about prepping even before like my body for 10 minutes. Is that something you could be prepared to show me, just sure. what I would do to just get my body ready for this? So any type, any type of warm-up. So you know that you're going to be squatting in order to spread the ice melt or in order to shovel, which we'll show you in a second. So maybe some squats because that's specific to what you're about to do. So you want to warm up the muscles by increasing the blood flow, okay? okay. Because you don't want to be cold and then all of a sudden go outside and strain yourself and have this massive, you know, strain on your heart. So, wow. yep, so you can do some squats if you're going to be using your arms, which you will be. You can do maybe some arm circles, something very simple. You don't need to do anything crazy like jumping jacks or anything like that. Just maybe some squats and some arm circles could be even enough just to, oh, okay. to increase so the just blood flow. So that's all about increasing blood flow. Yep, and, and you want to kind of be specific to what you're about to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. I just yeah, <laughs> I better sure. get that straight first. Yeah. Okay. All so right. it's all prepped, and then in order to shovel, we have a couple different kinds of shovels. 
This is your standard shovel that you're going to see in most stores. It's the cheapest one that almost everybody has, mm -hmm. where it's just um, a straight shaft. Mm -hmm. So good mechanics would be, again, she's going to face where she's going to do her work. She mm -hmm. squats, she lunged towards it, she had a good flat back, and then she's going to turn to dump it. Okay. So this is the piece that a lot of people miss. So what most people do is they'll kind of throw it over their shoulder. Yeah, that's exactly that what I you do. You either hurt your shoulder or you hurt your back on that. I mean, we see okay. occasionally other things like maybe neck or something. But um, so she's lunging towards it. She squats. She keeps her back flat. And then she moves to where she needs to dump. A lot of people think it's a waste of time, but you're going to not be as exhausted and you're not going to hurt yourself. Okay. People quit when they start having a back pain. All right, and that's you know? using the cheap uh, shovel. Now, if I get a little bit more expensive <laughs> shovel, that's better for me, right? So this is another example. There's so many examples, but this one is a little bit easier for individuals who are a little older, too. Um, so they have a nice handle to grab onto that will help, if, especially if the snow is really wet and heavy. Mm -hmm. It's going to give them a little bit more leverage. And then with the turning and dumping, they can maintain a pretty good grip. Okay. So it's sometimes nice. They're not going to have to really squeeze onto this. They've got an easy handle that's a little bit more ergonomic. Right. But her mechanics are the same. She still lunges towards where she's going to scoop, and then she uses good body mechanics to turn and dump it. Uh, I'm so glad I'm putting this on YouTube so <laughs> I can go back and watch this. Yeah, it's Yeah, it's good to know. So I take it. I can just get that shovel any hardware store probably. You can, or... you can get them seriously anywhere. Benny's, Walmart, Okay. anything, job right. lot. Is that the kind you would get? Um, I have a couple different kinds. I do have the regular because I'm a little cheap, mm -hmm. but I have still pretty good body <laughs> mechanics. But I do have one that's a bent handle like that. Uh-huh. So those are the two I have. I know my parents have one where you can lift off the handle to do the dump part. So you don't have to work as hard. <laughs> oh, so that's even better if yeah. you want to get... Yeah, even... if you want to get pricey. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Is there anything else I should do or no? Um, so once you've made it all the way down to your car after you've cleaned your <laughs> snow off, you got to get the snow and ice off of your car. So usually you get the snow off first because the ice is on that under layer. Right. Okay, so if Katie were to demonstrate on our, our fake windshield here, she would sh show you good mechanics to clean off the snow first, and she's going to start on one side of the car. Okay, she's not going to reach way across. Okay, again, you want to stay within your base of support. A lot of people try to reach as far as they oh, possibly yeah, I do can. Too. Okay. You want to stay right there, clean it off. You can even do your scraping while you're right there. Um, okay, save your energy. Okay. Yep. And she's maintaining good body mechanics. She's using a little bit of a squat where she needs it, and then she's keeping a flat back. Okay. And then when she's done, she's going to go around to the other side of the car and do the same thing. <laughs> So you just do a lot of a little extra walking, but it sounds like it saves your back and your shoulders. Absolutely. And yep. it's a good workout. It, it is, is a good, good workout. So you don't need to go to the gym, right? Not on those days. <laughs> Definitely not on those days. I don't know how do you know what we're supposed to get this winter? I heard it wasn't supposed to be that they keep bad. Changing it. I so know. I have no idea. First it was gonna be really bad, now they're saying it's gonna be warm. So you never know. So I might not have to do anything, but I do have to do those. Leaves are facing, yes. are staring at me, and sometimes I just kind of, if you wait long enough, though, it seems that the wind takes them and puts them on your neighbor. Your neighbor's yeah, and only hope. <laughs> yeah, that's usually my yard. I'm on the end of the street, so. So they all up, come to your house? Yep. <laughs> Maybe my so leaves I will go to, to your house. I need to go. really know how to rake. <laughs> now, you're in, in westerly Rhode Island, yes. right? Are you near the beach at all? I'm actually about 15 minutes from the beach. That's nice. Westerly is pretty big. Yeah. So it's good to stay away from the, the beach and be driving distance rather than walking distance. Okay. <laughs> you don't get as much snow, though, if you're down by the beach. You now, where'd rain. you get your doctorate? You, now, you do have to be a doc. You have to get a doctorate to be a physical therapist. Yes. So a lot of people don't realize that. Now, um, all there are, are doctorates. So you have to have some type of bachelor's degree. So you have four years of undergraduate. And then you have, um, depends on the school, but most of them are three years of graduate school. So you have seven years total. So if you're treated by a physical therapist nowadays, it's typically a doctor. Um, occasionally, you, you might hit somebody with a master's, or they might be transitioning to a doctorate, mm -hmm. which you can do after school. And where'd you get your PhD? So it's actually technically a DPT. Oh, so yeah, something yeah. different. Okay, so what does that it's mean? It's a clinical D doctorate. So uh -huh. it's doctor of physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a PhD. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to several other clinical professions. Mm -hmm. So you, um, so that you can 
treat technically without a script in certain states mm -hmm. so people can come right to you um, mm -hmm. instead of going to their regular primary care physician or something like that. So I got my doctorate at Stony Brook University and I got my undergraduate at University of um, Connecticut. Okay. Now so. Stony Brook, that's in New York, right? Yep, Long okay. Island. It's one of the SUNY colleges. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's great. So how long have you been practicing? So four years, a little bit over four years. It was four years in September. So what season is when you see the most seasonal related injuries, would you say? Because um, don't people have injuries in the summer from kneeling and gardening? They do, or? definitely with the gardening. But to be honest, I would say when all the ice and the snow, um, probably January, February, February is when we get a lot of ice, and we see a lot of people that slip and grab onto uh, something with, and hurt their shoulder. Oh, I think from the grabbing year, part, not just like yeah. cracking their heads, but yeah, or yeah, some, trying to save yourself. If you okay. go to slip, usually you have a protective response that right. tries to save yourself. So I would actually say, I, I think probably in February we see most of it. It's from ice. Hmm. More so than the, I mean, definitely with the raking, but I would say with slipping on the ice. That's why you really got to prep and be careful. You know, assume everything's black ice. <laughs> it's shoveling snow another, I would think that's a big one because that's just so heavy. So the, or is it, what's worse, raking or shoveling, would you say? I would say shoveling because you have to lift a load. Mm -hmm. And raking, you can at least pull towards you. Right. But shoveling, you have to push away, which is a lot more exertion. Okay. <laughs> So just basically you need to stay fit if you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you really can't, you need to hire somebody. Hire someone or Start looking it. around your neighborhood now yeah. for somebody with a young yep. back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Take you, it in small batches, though, if you're not in, in good, you know, physical condition. Now, do you do it in your house, all the shoveling and, and raking? <laughs> it's funny. My husband and I actually fight over it, like who will do it, because we both want to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I physically love the exercise, and he wants to do it to help me out. So uh. we're both out there. Last year we only had one shovel and we were fighting over who got to use the shovel so we would just give each other breaks but now we have two shovels. Oh, that's that's so good. Yeah. Good for a marriage so we'll, to have we'll two, two shovels. <laughs> we'll share it. Yeah. Now, Katie, you're from Utah. That's right. I just went to Utah for the first time a oh, couple really? of weeks. Yeah, I went to Salt Lake City yep. and I was just so excited to see these big mountains They're sticking They're beautiful, up. aren't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I was surprised it was hot. I didn't realize that it was hotter than New England. I mean, I just don't know, <laughs> I just didn't I know. know the area, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've never sure. been there. Sure. Um, so what are your injuries there? <laughs> In Utah? Yeah, like what, what kind of weather do you get there? Oh, it. we have all four seasons, and so we get the leaves on the ground and a lot of snow. Um, the difference between the snow in New England and Utah is that in Utah it's drier, so it's lighter to lift. Oh. Um, so which, you get more of it though, right, in Utah? Typically, yes. Well, where especially are you from in, in the Utah? Mountains. And I only know Salt Lake City. Yeah, where I'm are you from? from the Salt Lake City Valley, Sandy, Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had all those big mountains sticking up in your yes. backyard, or oh, do yeah. you live on a mountain? Uh, pretty close, about five minutes from, from the very bottom. Now, what made you want to become a physical therapist? Um, I don't know, a couple of different things. I guess I really loved the um, rehab after injuries aspect. Uh, instead of being the uh, acute onset, you know, seeing what does somebody, that mean, acute onset? somebody who's just sustained an injury two minutes ago and seeing them, I was more interested in after how to get them back to um, their prior level. Oh, okay. So that was, um, there was a lot of different paths I went down, but that's the main reason. So what are these different places that you could focus on? Like, it sounds like sports. One of you majored in there. There's a lot of different. Uh, it sounds like there settings is. Like, like I didn't realize. Yeah, there's there's a ton. Absolutely. So you can go into pediatrics, geriatrics, women's health, um, which I do that as well. Um, outpatient, which is what our clinic is, and we see practically everything. So what does that mean, outpatient? You mean they're they're home from the hospital and now they're coming yep. to Shoreline? Yep. Uh, to see you too and yep. And so it could there. be um, a neurological issue. It could be like Parkinson's disease. It could be um, a post-operative, post-operative back, knee, things like that. Um, headaches, back aches. Oh, for a headache, they mm -hmm. would they would come to a physical therapist. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Um, why? Why? I mean, I would never. I would think of taking some aspirin. <laughs> I mean, why it, would you go? it depends on the cause. Um, one of the main causes of headaches is actually poor posture. 
but you have to see where the, he the headache is coming from. Is it coming wow. from the top? Is it coming from muscle? Is it from actually the spine? Are they getting ridiculous symptoms down their arm? That could be an issue because you're pinching the nerve. Oh, so you guys um, do like this on them to figure it out? Or how do you figure it out? <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, that's why you need seven years of schooling. <laughs> yeah, good. <girl. laughs> to yeah, figure it's that a lot. out. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So there's, there's so many different areas um, that you can go into. Even our clinic has a few pediatric therapists that go into the schools. Oh, really? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, hospital, you can treat in the hospital. It looks like you have some fun equipment there that yeah. I'd like to bounce around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, everyone says it looks fun in there. <laughs> yeah, we use our imaginations. It's yes. great. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, it's a very positive uh, atmosphere. So, yeah. um, so if you do get injured, <laughs> I think right. it's the place to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Thank what you. what kind of other kind of cases would you see? Like examples of like maybe somebody has an accident and then they're okay. So recovering. Yeah. So like an it could be like an MVA, a motor vehicle accident. And with those, it's usually like a, a whiplash, neck pain, okay, so or back pain. Whiplash. That, like you that. see a therapist when you have whiplash. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Is there one kind of common injury that you see the most, no matter what the cause? Um, I mean, for, I would say maybe back pain, but we we see so many different things. Right. Sometimes it comes in cycles. Sometimes we might see a whole bunch of post-op shoulders. I mean, um, I, I, whenever you know. I see a therapist, it's usually for a shoulder, okay, or my, or or it's for a back, because I sit so much as a writer. Yeah. Um, but I take those exercises that I was taught, and I do them now at my desk and at other times when no one's looking, because some of Good. some of them I look funny doing. That's okay. <laughs> so, but you guys probably all look funny to each other, right? When nobody's, you probably all sitting around. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Because you, you yell at your friends for crossing their legs, so yep. you never, yep. I mean, because that's the way they you're get... taught, you know, to cross your legs like a lady, but yeah. apparently that's bad. What's yeah. that bad for? Well, um, the big thing that we see for that is usually hip pain, because mm -hmm. if you're doing this, you're going to be shortening this muscle here, which oh. goes right over the bursa. And then a lot of times you'll end up with the hip pain okay. um, because it creates one muscle is going to become shorter, another one's going to become longer, um, and a long muscle actually becomes weak and a short muscle becomes tight. So then you have a muscular imbalance. Hmm. So uh, this typically, I mean, it can cause knee problems and other problems, maybe back, but usually it's hip. Okay. Yep. That's interesting. Or it exacerbates an existing issue. Well, we probably only have a few minutes left. Um, is there something that you're particularly excited about in a patient or something that just excites you or something that happened that you're thrilled about or? Oh yeah, there was actually this really interesting case um, of one patient who came in and he, one side of his face was drooping mm -hmm. for kind of an unknown reason. And so um, rehabbing him back to being able to smile oh, and wow. to lift his eyebrows yeah. and close his eyes. It's been a very interesting case and great learning experience. And so he's been thrilled to see the changes. Yep. He's getting better really quickly. Is that which Bell's is palsy? That's yep. right. Yeah, my aunt had that. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. I don't know why suddenly it happens. Sometimes it just happens. The nerve gets inflamed and the signals aren't going to the face properly. And so the musculature droops. Yeah, I, well, I noticed when I had to do my back exercises, it did take a while. Mm -hmm. But then once it worked, it worked. You yeah. know, like, yeah. so that's the problem with exercising. You have to keep doing it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but keep up with it. If you don't, you'll be back to see us. Right. <laughs> yeah. So how do you keep mo people motivated? Is, do you have people that just aren't motivated to do the exercises? Well, or? the biggest thing is educating. Mm -hmm. it's, it's totally the biggest thing. My parents are teachers, and so I'm very into educating. But if people are empowered to understand what exactly Why is going on, I, yeah. then they take it into their own hands and they, That's true. you know, they'll want to make yeah, it better. Yeah, because if I know why it's going to work mm -hmm. or why I should do it, yep. then it is it is easier for me to keep it up. Yeah, right. so we educate so. everything. Oh, that's great. Yep. Well, do you have anything you like to teach people in particular? Like, is there a topic that you get excited about? I get really excited about um, cardiopulmonary physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really exciting T teaching people about different breathing techniques for their lungs if they have lung cancer or oh. different lung disorders. Um, like asthma, can sure. you increase Absolutely. lung capacity? Or are there exercises for that? You can do uh, exercises to maintain a specific disorder. You can't necessarily get rid of right. something. 
um, but it's to make life more manageable. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good to know. <laughs> Because breathing's kind of important. It's the most important. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keeps us going. <laughs> and I don't know how. What else do you wish people would do? Like, if you could just have everybody listen to you, and you could get on your soapbox, <laughs> what should they be doing? Do you think posture? Yes. Is that like? Do you think you know? Like, mechan I met a mechanic. He said, "All I just wish people would do is change their oil. They would avoid so many car repairs if they kept up with changing their oil." So, you, is yours posture? Are both of you posture? You would one hundred percent posture. Oh, are I'm, you? I'm about, <laughs> I was going to say almost every single patient I've treated in the past couple of months has been posture. Everybody has it. All right. So, say again what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to sit as upright as possible. Okay. You want to maintain the natural curves of the back. We're not actually. What do you mean maintain them? Like. So, so our, our lower spine, our lumbar spine should keep like a lordotic or a, a concave yeah. kind of curve to it. So that's where those lumbar supports in your car are. And then the middle spine, which is your um, thoracic spine, should be kyphotic, which is the, the opposite direction. And then your neck goes back to the way that the lower spine is. So if you can support it and maintain those curves so, of the spine. So that's then, the big important thing? Yeah, okay. but it's not just back. So we see okay. this for the headaches, the neck, the shoulder. Okay. So you also want to keep your shoulder blades back, back so that and your ears should be lined up. Everything should be lined up. Ears, shoulders, hips, feet on the floor. Instead of rounded. Yep. And fit, sitting forward. Which is what I do as a writer. <laughs> I mean, but if, so if I was a good writer, I would be doing this and not like yes, that. except your arms would be rested. <laughs> My arms would be rested on one of those little yep. pillowy you looking things. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. do you actually have the, that little pillow thing that you put? In front? I don't know what it's called. Do you guys know what that, that thing? The wrist the guard. Key? Yeah. At work, we actually we more have um, adjustable chairs, so we can adjust where we put our hands, okay. and we have so things for our feet and everything. So you you want it honestly rested, so that you don't have to raise your shoulder up. Okay. So they should kind of be at your side, and then your wrist should be neutral. It shouldn't be up or down. Mm -hmm. So it should just be neutral. Okay. All right. Um, so we only have about two minutes left. What would you like me to take away or the audience to take away or anything you wish we had talked about? Yeah. Um, I'll turn this over to Katie to kind of summarize. Okay. Sure. So the biggest thing is utilize resources as much as you can and think ahead of time. If you know there's ice on the ground, be prepared to get salt and put it on your front steps and take the extra time to do it properly so that you don't have to come in and waste all of your time with us on an injury that is hindering you from doing everything else. Those um, are the main topics. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else? No, I fully agree. I mean, after seeing, number one, all the leaves are all over the ground now, and we had a frost <laughs> this morning. So I said, hey, everyone needs to be ready for this. Yep. All right, and because of what you said, I decided I will start raking this week and not wait for all the leaves to yes, come good. down. Yes. So thank you so much for coming on my no show problem. and no problem. telling yeah, everybody what to do because uh, this is very timely. I appreciate it, and I hope you come back and give us some more good tips. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much for joining us on the Lisa Saunders Show, and I look forward to seeing you next week.